thunder, lightning, or in rain. When the hurly girl is done, the battle's lost and won. That will be air, the scent of sun. Where the place? Upon the heath, there to meet with Macbeth. I come, Grey Knockin. Thanks. And for earnest of a greater honor, he bade me. 
from him called the Fane of Cawdor. What? Can the devil speak true? The Fane of Cawdor lives. Why do you dress me in borrowed robes? Who was the Thane lives yet, but under heavy judgment bears that life which he deserves to lose. Lom's and Thane of Cawdor. The greatest is behind. Thanks for your pains. Do you not hope your children shall be kings? When those who promised Thane of Cawdor to me promise no less to them. That trusted home may get and kindle you once the crown, besides Thane of Cawdor. It is strange, and oftentimes, to one is to our harm, the instruments of darkness tell us truths, win us with honest trifles, to betray us in deepest consequence. Cousin, the word, I pray you. Two truths are told, as happy prologues <laughs> to the swelling act of the imperial theme. I thank you, gentlemen. This supernatural soliciting cannot be ill, cannot be good. If ill, why hath it given me earnest of success commencing in a truth? I am Thane of Cawdor. If good, why do I yield to that suggestion whose horrid image doth unfix my hair and make my seated heart knock in my ribs against the use of nature? Present fears are less than horrible imaginings. My thought, whose murder yet is but fantastical, shakes so my single state of man that function is smothered in surmise, and nothing is but what is not. Book our partners wrapped. <laughs> if chance will have me king, why chance may crown me without my stir? New honors come upon him like our strange garments, cleave not to their mold with the aid of use. Where the Macbeth would stay upon your leisure. Give me your favor. My dull brain was wrought for things forgotten. Let us toward the king. Think upon what hath chanced. And now for time, the interim having waited, let us speak our free hearts each to other. Very gladly. To lend enough. Come, friends. Is execution not on Coro? Will not those in commission yet return? My liege, they have not yet come back, but I have spoken with one who saw him die, who did report that very frankly he confessed his treasons, implored your highness's pardon, and set forth a deep repentance. Nothing in his life became him like the leaving it. He died as one who had been studied in his death, to throw away the dearest thing he owed us for a careless trifle. There is no art to find the mind's construction in the face. He was a gentleman on whom I built an absolute trust. Oh, worthy his cousin, the sin of my gratitude even now is heavy on me. Only I have left to say more as I do than more than all can pay. The service and the loyalty I owe, in doing it pays itself. Welcome hither, noble Banquo, that has no less deserved, nor must be known no less to have done so. Let me enfold thee and hold thee to my heart. There if I grow, the harvest is your own. Sons, kinsmen, thanes, and you whose places are the nearest know, we will establish our estate upon our eldest, Malcolm, whom we name hereafter the Prince of Cumberland. From hence to Inverness, and bind us further to you. I'll be myself the harbinger and make joyful the hearing of my wife with your approach. So humbly take my leave. My worthy call. <laughs> the Prince of Cumberland. That is a step on which I must fall down the road so I'll leap, for in my way it lies. Stars, hide your fires. Let not light see my black and deep desires. The eye, wink at the hand, yet let that be which the eye fears when it is done to see. True worthy Banquo, he is full so valiant, and in his commendations I have fed. It is a banquet to me, let's after him, whose care has gone before to bid us welcome. It is a peerless kinsman. they have more in them than mortal knowledge. When I burned in desire to question them further, they made themselves air into which they vanished. Whilst I stood wrapped in the wonder of it, came missives from the king who all hailed me as Thane of Cawdor, by which title before these weird sisters saluted me and referred me to the coming out of time with, Hail, king that shall be. This have I thought good to deliver thee, my greatest partner in success. 
that thou mightst not lose the Jews of rejoicing by being ignorant of what greatness has promised thee. Lay it to thy heart, and farewell. Lamas thou art, and Cawdor, and shall be what thou art promised. Yet do I fear thy nature. It is too full of the milk of human kindness to catch the nearest way. Thou wouldst be great art not without ambition, but without the illness that should attend it. What thou wouldst highly, that wouldst thou wholly. Wouldst not play false, and yet would strongly win. Thou wouldst have great longs. That which cries, thus thou must do if thou have it. And that which rather thou dost fear to do, than wishes should be undone. Hide thee hither, that I may pour my spirits in thine ear, and chastise with the valor of my tongue all that impedes thee from the golden round, which fate and metaphysical aid doth seem to have thee crowned withal. What is your tidings? The king comes here tonight. Thou art mad to say it. So please you, it is true, our thane's coming. One of my fellows had the speed of him, who almost dead for breath, had scarcely more than would make up his message. If you're contending, he brings great news. The raven himself is hoarse that hooks the fatal entrance of Duncan under my battlements. Come, you spirits that tend on mortal thoughts. Unsex me here and fill me crown to toe, top full of direst cruelty. Make thick my blood, stop up the excess of passage to remorse, that no compunctious visitings of nature shake my fell purpose, nor keep peace between the fact and it. Come to my woman's breast and take my milk for gall. You murdering ministers, wherever in your sightless substances you wait on nature's mischief, come, thick night, and pall thee in the dunnest smoke of hell, that my keen knife see not the wound it makes, nor heaven peep through the blanket of the dark to cry, Hold! Hold! Mm -hmm. Great walls, worthy Condor. Greater than both by the all hereafter. Thy letters have transported me beyond the singular present, and I feel now the future in the instant. My dearest love, Duncan comes here tonight. And when goes hence? Tomorrow, as he purposes. Oh, never shall some that morrow see. Your face, my thane, is as a book where men may read strange matters. To beguile the time, look like the time. Bear welcome in your eye, your hand, your tongue, look like the innocent flower, but be the serpent under it. He that's coming must be provided for, and you shall put this night's great business into my dispatch, which shall to all our days and nights to come give solely sovereign sway master of. We will speak further. Only look up clear, to alter favor ever is to fear. Leave all the rest to me. This castle hath a pleasant seat. The air nimbly and sweetly recommends itself unto our gentle senses. I have observed the air is delicate. See, see, our honored hostess. The love that follows us sometimes with our trouble, which still we thank as love. All our service in every point twice done, and then done double, were but poor and single business to contend against those matters deep and broad, but with your majesty loads our house. Where's the thing of Cotto? We course him at the heels, but he rides well. <laughs> Fair and noble hostess, we are your guests tonight. Your servants ever. Give me your hand. Conduct me to my host. We love him highly and shall continue our graces towards him. By your leave, hostess. <laughs> if it were done when tis done, then tis well over done quickly. If the assassination could tremble up the consequence and catch with his surcease success, that but this blow might be the be all and the end all. Here, but here, upon this bank and shoal of time, we jump the life to come. But in these cases, we still have judgment here, that we but teach bloody instruction, which, being taught, return to play the inventor. This even-handed justice commends the ingredients of our poison chalice to our own lips. 
He's here in double trust. First, as I am his kinsman and his subject, strong both against the deed. Then, as his host, who should against his murderer shut the door and not bear the knife myself. Besides, this Duncan hath borne his faculties so meek, hath been so clear in his great office, and his virtues will plead like angels. Trumpet tongued against the deep damnation of his taking off. And pity, like a naked newborn babe striving the blast, or heaven's cherubims horsed upon the sightless couriers of the air, shall blow the horrid deed in every eye, that tear shall drown the wind. I have no spurs to the size of my intent, but only vaulting ambition, which o'erleaps itself and falls on the other. How now, excuse he is almost stopped. Why have you left the chamber? I'm asking. No, you not, he has. We will proceed no further in this business. He hath honored me of late, and I have bought golden opinions from all sorts of people which would be worn now in their newest cloths, not cast aside so soon. Was the hope drunk wherein you dressed yourself? Hath it slept since it wakes it now to look so green and pale at what it did so freely? From this time, such I account thy love. Art thou afeard to be the same in thine own act and valor as thou art to desire? Wouldst thou have that which thou esteemst the ornament of life and live a coward in thine own esteem? Letting I dare not wait upon thy word like a poor cat in the attic. Pretty peace! I dare do all that may become a man. Who dares do more is not. What beast was then that made you break this enterprise to me? When you durst do it, then you were a man. And to be more than what you were, you would be so much more than man. Nor time nor place did then adhere, and yet you would make both. They have made themselves, and that their fitness now does unmake you. I have given suck, and know how tender it is to love the babe that milks me. I would, while it was smiling in my face, have plucked my nipple from its boneless gums and dashed the brains out, had I so sworn as you have done to this. If we should fail? We fail! But screw your courage to the sticking place, and will not fail. When Duncan is asleep, whereto the rather shall his day's hard journey soundly invite him. His two chamberlains will eye with wine and wassail, soundly convinced that memory, the reward of the brain, shall be a few, and the receipt of reason a limbeck only. When in swinish sleep their drenched natures lie as in a death, what cannot we I perform upon the unguarded Duncan? What not upon the spongy officers who shall bear the guilt of our great quell? Bring forth men, children only. For thy undaunted metal should compose nothing but males. Will it not be received when we have marked with blood those sleepy two of his own chamber? And use their very daggers that they have done. Who dares receive it other, as we shall make our griefs and clamor roar upon his death? I am settled, and bend up each corporal agent to this terrible feat. Away, and mock the time with fairest show. False face must hide with a false heart. Doth not. Thank mm -hmm. you.